As someone who greatly enjoys fighting games, one of the biggest dreams I used to talk about with my friends back in the day was having an all-star roster of my favorite characters in one big epic versus game. And over the years, some of these dreams actually came true, but never to the extent of that ultimate dream. Given all the logistics it would take for a game of this caliber to come to fruition, I pretty much come to a realization that this is never going to happen, but at least there is something that has in some ways kept that dream alive, and that is a fighting game engine affectionately known as Mugen. Created under a group of developers known as Electbyte, Mugen ultimately became a way for you to port characters, effects, stages, and other user experiences into the engine from any sprite-based video game you could get access to. This resulted in some of the craziest customizations to characters and the ability to create rosters that span into the hundreds. Since Mugen came to be back in 1999, there have been a great deal of new developments and the options that you have to use this engine, whether to create something or just to see what all the fuss is about in 2023, is what has led me to creating this video. The last version released by Electbyte was 1.1 Beta Version 1, and it is possible that nothing will come after this. I was unable to access a build of this version directly from the website, but there are communities like Mugen Archive that you can download it from. Even though the original creators have moved on, there still has been a lot of development happening that is related to the original Mugen, and one of the biggest developments has come in the form of another fighting game engine known as Ecomet. Ecomet was designed to be compatible with Mugen, which allowed creators and others who enjoyed Mugen builds to easily port assets over to the new engine. The biggest reason Ikemen has gained popularity among the Mugen community is because of a feature that the original Mugen never had, an online multiplayer mode. Ikemen is also open source, which in turn allowed more developers to create their own forks of the original application. This has led to another popular version of Ikemen known as Ikemen Go, which uses Google's programming language. As it stands right now, Ikemen Go seems to have shown the most promise, adding additional game modes, and even having a fork that was developed to use rollback netplay. For those that don't know, Ikemen uses input delay, and well, input delay isn't so great in terms of playing with people who live at further distances, as it greatly affects both the frame rate and inputs as well. Rollback has been known to improve both at greater distances, and so has become the preferred way to play fighting games in this current generation. So that's pretty much where things are in terms of development. Now, if you're interested in seeing how all this works, I provided a link to Ikemen Go in the comment section of this video, and I'll be going through a brief walkthrough of the application. As of this video, the current version of Ikemen Go is 0.98.2, and it's the one that I'm going to use for the walkthrough. From here, we have to click on the version we want to download and click on Ikemen Go version 0.98.2. This should automatically start a download of the application. Once the download has completed, you will want to head to your download folder location. This application requires a manual installation, so you'll need a program like WinRAR. Once the installation is complete, you can try running the application by clicking on ecommendgo.exe. If you have a 32-bit operating system, you'll want to click on the one that has x86 at the end. If things are working as expected, you will get the intro followed by the main screen. If you have ever used Mugen before, then you know this screen very well. So you have a better understanding of how the application works. Two characters and a background stage is added to the game, and you can see this by choosing one of the game modes. For this example, I'm gonna go with the practice mode. Things seem to be working, so I think it's time to grab a stage and some characters. The Mugen Archive is definitely a go-to for both characters and stages. It does require you to create an account before you download anything, but once you do, you'll get instant access to everything that is available. So I've downloaded a few characters in one stage, 
and now I'm all set to add them. Adding characters and stages is a pretty straightforward process. For characters, you want to extract each one into the character folder location. Before you extract, you may need to create a folder for certain characters. Make sure you also create a simple name as this will make things easier for the second required step. Like characters, you can extract stages in the stages location, but creating a folder isn't necessary. Once you have added your characters and stages, we now have to add the characters and stages to the select.dev file found in the data folder. If we don't do this, the characters and stages will not appear in the application. Initially, the file will not be associated with anything that we can open an application with, so you will want to right click over the file, choose the open with option, and select notepad. This should open up notepad automatically, and as you can see, there is a ton of instructions on how you can customize characters and stages. We will need to scroll down a bit to find a location where we can add the characters. You will want to enter the name of your characters folder under the insert your characters here section. To simplify things, you can always copy and paste the name of your folder, which will take away the hassle of going back and forth to make sure you have the name spelled correctly. You may have already noticed the two character names present, which is what you saw when we launched the application for the first time. These are nice examples that show you how to set a default background up for your character as well as the order you want your character to be in for the arcade mode. Once you have added your character names, we need to scroll down further for stages. This time we'll add the name of the stage followed by the DEF extension. Once you have completed adding the names for characters and the stages, Make sure you save the changes and close the application. If everything was done correctly, when you reopen the application, your added character and stages should now be available. Adding music is also something you can do as well. The format used for music is MP3 and goes in the sound folder location. Once you added a song to the sound folder, then you want to go back to the select.def and decide whether you want to add it to the character or stage. For this example, I'm going to go to the stage. You can just copy and paste the command and then copy and paste the name of the song to make things easy. Once you've entered the command, save the changes and head back into the application to see if it works. You can also add music to the character select and title screen as well. In order to do this, go into the data folder location and open the system.def file. The areas for title and character select screen are left blank, so you just have to enter the music file you want to add. I wanted to jump back into training for a moment to talk a little bit about some of the characters I chose and why. Unlike most fighting games, the gameplay mechanics from Mugen are tied to the characters themselves. Over the years, creators developed a certain style for the characters they customized. This one is created using the pot style, and this character was created by the person the style is named after. The pot style mostly used Capcom vs SNK2 for both effects and mechanics, but they used EX specials from Street Fighter 3 and the Excel system from Street Fighter EX2. Other popular Mugen creators took the foundation of pot style and created their own. This next character was created by Divine Wolf, who added some King of Fighters mechanics to their characters. Another popular creator is Infinite, 
which took some inspiration from Marvel vs. Capcom, which simplifies the basic combo system, making basic attacks cancel into each other. They also made the characters more customizable, so you can actually change mechanics to match your preferred way of playing. Going into the characters folder and opening config.txt is where these changes can be made. Another thing I suggest thinking about is your stages of choice. For characters whose mechanics allow them to jump really high and create combos in the air, you want to make sure the stages accommodate this kind of movement. The online mode may be different than what you're used to. It does not have a matchmaking server and uses a peer-to-peer -peer connection or P2P for short. There are also no online lobbies that you can connect to, so it will just be you and willing participants that you connect with. You are either going to be the host, which means someone is going to connect to you, or you're going to be joining the host, which is also known as a client. If you're the host, you provide an IP address. It is recommended you use a VPN or virtual private network to provide the IP address. The preferred program is Rodman VPN and it's free to use. Make sure both you and someone joining download the application. Once you've installed Rodman and it's confirmed you're connected, you'll want to create a new server. Once the server has been created, provide a request the server name and the password to the player that is going to join. Once you have provided this information, select Network and then select Host in Ecomit. You may get prompted to allow the Windows firewall. Make sure you have given permission or this will not work. If something happens before you get a chance to give permission, no worries. You will just have to go into the firewall settings to give permission. Once it says connecting, you just have to wait for the other player to join. If you are joining, you join the network on Rodman VPN by providing the network name and password from the host. If successful, you will see the computer name and the IP address of the host. Now open Ecomin, select network, select join game, and select new address. This will then prompt you to create a new network name. After you've created the network name, then you'll enter the IP address. If everything worked correctly, you will see options for game modes and you are all set to play. Now you may have also noticed the port number if you were connecting from the host. This is something that you may have to manually open in the settings of your router if you are unable to connect. If your router is set up with UPnP, then the port will automatically be opened. You will want to look up your router's manual for instructions on how to set up port forwarding as it is different for each router. So that is just a small example of what you can do in Mugen. Now if you're not all that thrilled about doing all this, the great news is there is a community full of Mugen users who have created their own builds and others who create what we call screen packs that you can use in your own creation. Some have even created original games and I'll leave a link to a few of them in the comment section below. Hopefully this introduction to Mugen has piqued your interest and gotten you a bit excited about the current development that has taken place for this very beloved application. This is the core, your resident entertainment techie, signing out.